Welcome to the video where I change the brake pads and rotors on a 2015 Chevy Traverse. This will work on a lot of other vehicles. I'll leave them down in the description below. Uh, the items you're going to need are, of course, a floor jack, safety jack stands, a hammer with a block of wood or a rubber hammer, three-eighths ratchet, a half-inch ratchet, a half-inch breaker bar, two C clamps, a scraper, brake cleaner, a T35 Torx bit, a 13 millimeter socket, a 22 millimeter socket, a 13 16 socket, and you'll also need a new set of brake pads and rotors. Please try to get the hardware kit to go along with that. I always recommend replacing the hardware so the brakes are not noisy and all of your components will work as designed. The first thing you need to do is set your parking brake. Uh, then you'll start jacking up the corner of the car where you're changing the brake. Uh, so before your tire comes completely off the ground, you'll want to use a breaker bar to break all of your lugs loose. Uh, that will be much easier than jacking the car up. Then you'll finish jacking the car up and put a jack stand under it for safety. Uh, then you can remove the lug nuts, um, probably by hand, but if you need to, you can always use, finish using a socket or that breaker bar. Uh, once the lugs are off, you can just pull the tire out of the way. Uh, here I'm showing you the bolts that hold on the bracket and the bolts that hold on the caliper. The first thing we're going to remove is the caliper. Uh, so here I'm showing you the bolts that hold the caliper on. Those bolts are 13 millimeter. And again, I'm using a half inch drive uh, ratchet because those are going to be on there a little bit tight. Uh, so first of all, I break them both loose and then I can remove them both. Um, once they're broken loose, they turn relatively easy. Um, so there I'm showing you one of the bolts and here is the other bolt. Uh, once those two bolts are out, all you have to do is pull that caliper straight off. Uh, now you're going to support that caliper um, the best you can by hanging it or placing it up on top uh, because you don't want it hanging off of that brake line. That brake line can actually uh, break pretty easily. Uh, you can see how far those uh, brake pads have worn. Now I'm showing you the bolt that holds on the caliper because we do need to remove the caliper, uh, the caliper bracket, I should say, um, before we can actually get the disc off. Here you can see me using a breaker bar um, to remove those bolts or to loosen those bolts up. Um, those bolts are 13 16 uh, socket and um, I loosen them up with the breaker bar and then you can see I'm using the half inch ratchet to take them the rest of the way out. Uh, they appear to have some sort of lo thread locker or um, some sort of oxidation on them. They ca they're coming out pretty hard. Um, hopefully yours don't come out quite as hard, uh, but I had to pretty much so screw them all the way out with the with the ratchet. Uh, there are the bolts and here is the calip uh, caliper bracket. Um, so you can see there's uh, some plungers right there. Now those plungers need to be loose. They need to be free to float back and forth because uh, that is what allows the brakes to self-center if they wear a little bit on the inside or the outside. Uh, so you want to make sure yours are nice and free just like that. Uh, then you can pry off the um, brake pad hardware. Uh, because we're going to put on new hardware. You always want to try to put on new hardware if possible. Um, so I'm using a knife to scrape off the rust and corrosion um, where that hardware goes. Here I'm using a T25 Torx uh, socket to remove this little um, bolt that holds on the disc. Uh, at this point I'll take a piece of wood and tap on the disc um, if you have a rubber mallet, you can use that instead. Uh, you can see some serious burn marks on uh, this disc. Uh, so that is why I was actually changing this because you were getting a pulsing in the steering wheel when um, you put the brakes on. Uh, so here I'm just taking out my new disc. And the first thing that you want to do when you get any sort of new discs or other hardware, you want to compare them to the stuff that you've taken off. Make sure the hub is the right di diameter. Make sure the thickness is right. Make sure the bolt patterns are correct. Um, just to make sure you're putting on the right stuff. Uh, there you see I'm cleaning uh, that surface off with some brake cleaner to make sure there's nothing under the uh, brake um, disc. And here I'm reinstalling that Torx bolt. Again, that um, Torx is a T25, and you'll want to snug it up pretty, pretty good. Uh, and then uh, here you can see I am cleaning off the surfaces of the brake and the, uh, where the hardware goes. Uh, the brakes, uh, the brake 
discs always come with some grease on them so you want to make sure you clean that off because that will not be good for your brakes uh, so here you can see I'm installing the new hardware now the new hardware just simply pushes on to those square bosses um, so you just want to make sure that they line up correctly and then you just push them into place they do push in a little bit hard but um, you could use a pair of pliers if your fingers aren't strong enough to uh, put them on there so here I have my new set of pads uh, and you can see that one of the pads actually has a little um, uh, sheet metal piece sticking off the side that little um, piece sticks to the inside of the car and uh, the inside of the car is the side on the bracket that has the bolt holes uh, so that's that's an easy way of of um, telling which side that goes on uh, so once you get the inside one in place uh, you can put the outside one now those just kind of push in um, and they push in a little bit hard um, into the hardware and the hardware actually holds them in place nicely and the hardware is chrome plated uh, so it doesn't corrode and have problems with rust uh, once you have the brake pads in sitting in with the hardware uh, you can put in the large bolts now I always put the top bolt in first um, by hand and that way I can just simply rotate the bracket around until the bottom one lines up and that way I don't really have to get my head in there and look around I can kind of do it by feel uh, once they're in by hand I'm going to use my 13 16 socket um, to tighten those back up and once they're tightened up as tight as I can get them with the ratchet I will use the breaker bar to finish tightening those because uh, this is your brake system so you want to make sure that they're pretty doggone tight so next we're going to look at the caliper uh, so the caliper um, is right here and you can see it's got two pistons um, that push in and out uh, to uh, make the brakes work um, and what happens is is as the brake pads wear those calipers work their way out um, and there is no spring return in them um, so those calipers work their way out now we need to use our c-clips uh, to push them back in because now that we have uh, really nice thick pads uh, we need as much space as we can so you're going to screw that in slowly with your c-clamp because you don't want to uh, screw it in really fast because if you screw it in really fast it'll actually force that other um, caliper piston out uh, and it will also have a possibility of overflowing your reservoir at your um, at your brake booster uh, so here you can see I'm screwing in the second one and once the second one is in all the way you'll feel it bottom out and you don't have to push any harder than when it when it bottoms out after that you can remove the two C clamps um, and that those pistons will stay in um, at this point you can just slide the caliper over your brake pads um, and then it's time to put your two small bolts back in uh, so you will um, get them lined up with those plungers and you'll screw them in now if for some reason the plunger starts to spin there are flats on the outside of the plunger um, that you can just put a wrench over uh, to keep it from spinning um, so here you'll use your 13 millimeter um, socket and uh, tighten these bolts up and remember tighten them up pretty good um, they are part of your braking system so you'll want to make sure they're they're pretty tight um, at that point your brakes are pretty well done um, all you have to do is reinstall your wheel and your tire on this car um, and take it for a test drive now when putting the wheel and tire on you want to be very careful with your fingers and make sure you don't pinch them uh, in there uh, at this point I've put the wheel in place and now I'm holding it in place with one hand while I screw in a lug with the other hand um, at that point once you have one lug screwed in the, the wheel will stay on by itself uh, then you can start the other lugs um, so once you've got the lugs started by hand um, you'll want to tighten them up in a star pattern um, going across in X's um, until you're completely um, finished then you'll want to take the car for a test drive a short ride then come back and retorque um, the wheel studs on uh, so at this point you've completed your brake job um, congratulations and thank you for watching uh, my video goodbye